my um, third wife, an absolute angel. That's how I met her and why, of course, I fell for her and married her. And she me. She was brought up an excellent Adventist, a paragon of virtue, uh, the perfect Indian daughter. able to destroy the principle of her school, and did, simply with the word, a letter to the governors, which happened to be by the act of God, to the right people at the right time, and uh, got rid of the lady in charge of the nurse training place that she was in. She'd become a nurse. She was a good nurse. Beautiful person. But an Adventist. Seventh-day Adventists are... They don't know it. They think it's quite absurd to be criticised. But... They are legalistic. It's a religion of obedience. It's a nightmare, of course. None of them keep it well. To state the extreme, they quite simply don't know what love is. Worse, they believe they do. They think it's obedience. They think it's authority. They think it's judgment and sacrifice. It's, it's the Christian faith in all its unutterable glory and makes the world shudder that there can be such evil. She knew I knew what love was, and that's what she wanted. And she devoted herself passionately, wonderfully, beautifully to me, and I to her, because I knew that's what she needed, and I could give it. She found, too, that she was giving it. We were as close as close. What she didn't know, which is understandable being an Adventist, is that she is spirit. Not miserable worm of man, but spirit. That love is not confined one life, but all life, because all life is born of God. It's not that some life is born to damnation, judgment, and some are judged good to glory by the sacrifice of God's Son by his own dad. You can't believe such an appalling religion. But children do. Because they make mistakes. And because they haven't known love. The most wonderful thing you can give a child. And we're all children. Here, in this world, in this universe. The most wonderful thing you can give them is your love. You become the right hand of God, loving and caring them into glory. Bless you. Where was I? Well, she had a 
child. For a moment, she feared that it was a girl. Surely the one she loves will want a son. She's despondent. She's had the birth, she has a child, it's a daughter. You see, she's brought up in a culture that says we value men, not women. Despite of all my love, this bedrock conviction was still in her being. So she was despondent. She had gone to glory, she passed out on the bed. It was a lack of fluids, of course. You see, the river of life had stopped in her. This fountain that springs up into life eternal, eternally had stopped. Because of her experience. But then she realized Marshall's so happy at having a girl. Wow. He's delighted in having a girl. He's not had a girl before. And he thinks that's wonderful. A daughter. And she recovered. But you see, she brought up an Adventist. She now had a child. Oh goodness, I'm a mum. I must focus on my child. She took her love from her husband and gave it to her daughter. Husband was devastated. He's used to being a dad. He knows what the wife needs. He steadies himself. This is a way I can show love for her. By helping her in her goal. Her focus is shifted from me to the child. I understand that. This is what happens in this world. But it doesn't happen in heaven. God does not shift his focus from his family, the host of heaven, to the newborn child on earth. We all care for the child together and delight in loving the child together. You see the staff still love each other. I know that they need each other's love to be effective in being staff, in doing what they value, which is bringing up the children. Do you see, the Adventist teaching truly didn't understand love. How could they? They'd never received it. But Marshall, you said you loved her. She had received it. Yes, but she'd received this notion of finiteness too. You see, the humility of an Adventist is not that you are born again a child of God. You won't know if you're going to heaven until judgment day. And that's a terrible, frightening time. You may be weighed in the balance, in the Egyptian sense, and found wanting. This religion comes from ancient Egypt, you know. When the Judaics, the Hebrew story, talks of coming out of Egypt, it means it. It's the religion that came out of Egypt. It's about nations, about power and authority 
obedience and sacrifice. Because it's about battle, we sacrifice the members of our country in battle all the time. For the elite, the king, who is utterly corrupt, of course. I mean, riches have gone to his head. No child could survive such pampering. Hmm. Where was I? Well, I was in the pit of despair, wasn't I? I've got an Adventist as a wife. Still. And I seem powerless, God, to bring her back to the glory that she should have. She's discontent. She's thrown God out the window. She's about to throw Marshall out the window, too. And the police come to his rescue. Thank God for civilization. How amazing. Every policeman that came to my door was an angel. I couldn't believe it. I've never seen authority in such light. Thank you, Dad. So they protected me. They probably thought they were protecting the child, but the child didn't need protecting. It was me that needed protecting. <laughs> and I went through great distress, of course. God goes through great distress in caring for us. Feel every problem that your child has. It totally absorbs your purpose and your lifestyle. Because you're a child of God. We are the love of God. We are His hands. We are His grace, by His grace. We are His grace and love and kindness. Well, she of course divorced me. Not too difficult. You would have thought he's been divorced twice before. Surely he can survive this. Yes, I did. It was hard going though. Very close to death's front. And I knew fear, which I hadn't known for a long time. I realized I feared the future. I needed God more seriously than I'd ever needed him before. This was a major lesson. I graduated, of course, by the grace of God. I thanked God for the difficulty. I thanked God for her not loving me and her going. I thanked her for every detail, of, thanked God for every detail of the situation. Did that make her return to me? Well, not yet. This is seven years later. Will it? Well, yes, in the fullness of time but it might not be during my time here on earth. But it might be. God will do what is best. What else could he do? <laughs> it's God. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Love you, Dad. So it's been a great blessing to me. Mm, a hard lesson. But my goodness, 
look around me, I've seen people with harder lessons than that. And their heart reaches out to them because of the love of God, our God, in us. Thank you, Dad. I got di distracted. Um, what I meant to emphasize was that it is catastrophic if you still identify yourself as being, um, you know, in my case, Marshall living now in New Zealand, and etc., etc., etc. You are not the body. You are not the persona that you are wearing in this life. This is a story to help you. You are spirit. You're not contained by time or place or matter. You occupy such from the point of view of the entertainment, the lesson of the story. You are spirit. God is spirit. You are born of God. Of course you are a spirit. Are you expecting to meet a body of God? You know, golden-haired, blue-eyed Jesus or something, wandering around in robes by the, by the sea when you take your pilgrimage to Israel? Oh, I don't think so. Why then are you still identifying with the body? You are not the body. You are spirit. And spirit embraces spirit. Is not constrained by travel time <laughs> or communication problems <laughs> or being in one place at any one time. Your spirit. Your ability to love is not restricted. It's not that you are living in a dimension of scarce resources like it is here. The economy is quite different, in fact. <laughs> the whole subject of economics is irrelevant to heaven. Unlimited resources, unlimited love. Eternal, everlasting, infinite. And other dimensions that we cannot express. whilst we occupy narrowly this body. It is not that you're going to sleep in death, it's that you're waking up from sleep when you leave this place. When you break the dream, when you finish the story and you return to your loving home in your consciousness, when you know you are spirit, when you know you are a member of the family of God, loved, utterly and utterly cared for by all heaven, the grace of God, your dad, bless you. You should say every morning, I am not the body. I am here to experience the lesson and be blessed, but I am not the actor, I am not Marshall, <laughs> I'm just playing the part, I don't mean I'm fraudulent, I'm earnestly playing the part, but it's only an act, it's only a story. I'm spirit. 
being trained by my heavenly parents to be eternal, adult, member of the host of heaven, my dad's utterly loved family that love him utterly because of who he is.